Yeah, hi everyone and welcome to my latest video. This one's another in a series that I'm sort of planning to dot amongst my other videos on sort of the most sort of common surface mount parts and how I fit them. There'll be a few hit do's and don'ts and uh, hints and tips throughout uh, the video showing you the sort of different components and so yeah in this one I've got a basically quite a large switch I've got a small six pin IC down there I've got resistor network I've got quite a large plastic connector with you know I'll give you a few do's and don'ts with that the same there I've got some very soft plastic LEDs now they're quite a common part and uh, you know there's a good tip I can give you when I'm fitting them and also right at the top we've got a 40 way very fine pitch connector and uh, yeah, I'll tell you how I sort of do the soldering on them. And I've got quite, you know, some good tips for fitting them. So yeah, what I'll do, I'll get straight on with fitting the uh, the LEDs first. And yeah, hopefully you'll learn something along the way. And I uh, hope you enjoy it. Right, so this crack straight on with the first video. This one, I'm just going to fit some LEDs. But these these particular LEDs have got a really soft plastic body. And uh, the, the main thing here is, uh, is speed, basically. So basically what you do... Just flux your pads as normal. People, a lot of people ask me how I put my flux on. I literally spray it in. I've got a can of spray flux, so I just spray into a small container and just apply it with the end of a dipped tie wrap. So what I do, basically, you've got to be really quick with these LEDs because otherwise the sort of metal leg on them will go straight through the plastic. So what you want to do is just tack it on gently. So like I say, really quick. Do the same with the second one. I'll show you all these legs after. I'll just solder them up for now. And uh, I'll turn them around in a minute so you can see all the joints. Like I say, just get your iron in there. And just don't hang around really quick. Just go back and now I can revisit the first end. So like I say, I tacked it on quick, so you've got to do this. And what I'll do after, I'll put another LED on there after, and I'll show you how sort of soft the plastic is and how easy it melt. So that's the two plastic body LEDs on. So you've got a nice fill it up, both front and back. So there's the two joints at the front. Just turn it round to the back so you can see the joints. So you get a nice fillet of sold right around the back with no sort of damage to the plastic body. So the main thing, if you hold your iron on these too long, you'll see quite the, the plastic starts to blister. So that's what you're looking for, a nice sort of a non-damaged body. And what I do, I'm just going to lay an LED on there and I'll show you how easy the sort of body melts. So this is literally just for the video. So this if I hold that on there, you'll start to see the body, the plastic start to blister. I can already see it going around this corner. It starts, it's very soft plastic, this, as you can see. So basically, like I say, the main thing is get your eye on there really quick and, uh, and you're safe. So that's basically uh, the way I do my LEDs with soft plastic body. So what I'll do now, I'm just going to move on to another component with sort of a plastic body is quite a large connector so uh, this cracks straight on with that one right so here we move on to a sort of basically quite a large plastic connector with two pins coming out of the center so basically what i've got here i've got quite a large lug at this end there's one around the other end as well and i've got two main sort of pins around this corner i'll turn the sort of connector around as i'm going so what i've done i've already pre-fluxed this because uh, yeah i always use my flux so the way to do this the main thing with this sort of type of connector is to be quick so obviously you've got metal pins going into a plastic body so as you see I've got a nice fillet around there so what I do I'll turn that around I'll try and keep it in focus for you try and get that in focus so, yeah, so what you've got there you've got two pins so what I do then these are the ones you've got to be really quick on all you're looking for you fill it up the sides so that runs around the back so that's all you're looking for. I feel it's a little bit up the front, so it goes around the sides all the way to the back. And then what you do then, I'll turn it around to the other end and I'll do that main lug there. So again, with these daily, the important thing is to be quick, because otherwise, especially with the main two pins, you don't want to be too long on them, because if they move, obviously the thing plugging into it is going to have difficulty. 
So what I do, I clean all this up after. As you can see, I've got a nice fillet down there. I've got two nice joints there where the solder's running up the side. And you know, that's, that's the sort of nice amount. And it was not done nice and quick, so you've got no danger of moving. And you've got a nice sort of lug soldered up at that end there. So that's all you're looking for on these sort of connectors. But later on in the video, I've got a 40 way sort of connector, real fine pitch. And so the main purpose of showing this one was sort of emphasize how quick you need to be when you're doing these. So what I do now, I clean all this up and put photos up and uh, I move on to the next component. Right, so you come on now to a surface mount switch. Now the main reason I'm showing this is basically for the cleaning aspect of them and also the fluxing aspect. Because the, the sort of main thing about a surface mount switch, you cannot get any flux or contaminated cleaning fluid down in the centre there. So basically what I do, I fluxed it carefully with the component off the board. I'm just going to tack the, the bottom right pin. That's the one I normally do if I'm doing a four-way sort of connector component, i.e. sort of a switch or a crystal. So what I do then, I do the two, back two joints properly. I turn them around in a minute so you can see all the soldering and uh, sort of what sort of joint you're looking for. So yeah, you just want a little bit of solder around the sort of base so it goes up the sides and sort of round to the hill. I'll just put a little bit more flux around the front so I'll get a sort of a quicker joint. So yeah, the main thing is sort of to avoid getting any contaminated fluids or flux down that centre. So what I do, all you're looking for is a little sort of fillet. Like I say, it goes round the sides, sort of up the front. And that's the sort of joint you're looking for. So what I do, I'll quickly clean one. So yeah, with this, I've seen people brush these over the years and uh, obviously that's quite a big mistake because they're getting contaminated sort of fluxes and stuff down the centre. So I generally sort of gently just go along with, with a cloth normally with a bit of cleaning fluid applied to it. And uh, yeah, as you can see, you've got a nice clean joint without anything going near the centre. So I'll just turn it around and do the other side. So as you can see, I've got two nice joints there. Sort of, yeah, they've gone quite well. Got sort of up the front, round the hill, and I'll clean them as well. So yeah, every surface mount switch I do the same way, whether it be sort of a tall toggle switch or sort of this push button switch. But like I say, avoid getting anything near that centre. So that's all you're looking for. And uh, yeah, I've got another type of switch here, so I'll just quickly show you that. But I do that the, exactly the same way. So yeah, the main thing, like I say, don't get anything down there because later in life you will sort of suffer for it. So that's basically the way I do my surface mount switches. So anyway, that completes the first half of these videos. What I'll do, I'll put a few photos up with these and then I'll move on to a few more after that. Right, so following on from the photos of the previous videos, I'm going to start the second half of, of the videos with basically a quite a simple resistor network. These are basically made up of four, a block of four resistors. You can get larger, you can get two-way ones, six-way ones, eight-way ones. Also capacitors come in these sort of combinations. So basically, if you go from that pad to that pad, this component is basically made up of four separate resistors in one sort of component. So you've got one pair there, sort of two three, four, this actual value is 680 ohms. It's just an easier way of fitting four resistors in one go. So again, as uh, always, I use my flux. All I do then, just lift that into position. And again, I just tack it into one position. I don't put the, the solder on beforehand, like I say some people do. So all I do is get a small amount of my iron, and I can just go to one any one of the sort of bottom two pins and just tack that into position. Just get nice and central on the pads and just tack it in. And that's sort of held that into position. I'll just put a fresh bit of flux on just to sort of aid the solder in. 
So I just run a little bead of flux down both sides. Again, I always state the importance of flux. You can't really get enough of it. And then all I do is just simply go down the joints one by one. It's a bit like doing any normal resistor, basically. You don't really need too much on these. You don't really need much to go on the top. If it does, it doesn't really matter. So as you can see, I've got a nice fillet on all four. So I'll just go around the back and do them ones. I'll take photos of this because I appreciate you can't see the joints at the back. So that's all it is, basically. I'll just give that a quick clean. So all you're looking for is a nice fillet up the side, um, sort of a nice curved fillet like I've said in previous videos. And uh, that's basically the way to fit the resistor networks and say that you can get capacitor versions of these. And it's just an easy way of fitting sort of four components in one really. And that's uh, basically what you're looking for. So you've got a nice fillet up the side. Just turn it around a little bit. There so you've got a nice fillet up each side. It's the same around the back, so yeah. So basically, it's like I say, it's four four components in one, and uh, that's what you're looking for for your networks. So what I do, I move on now to a quite a small, well, a very small sort of IC, and uh, yeah, we'll take it from there. Right, so now I come onto a really fine IC. It's only got six pins, but it, yeah, it's really small. Basically, this is just to prove that basically whatever size IC you, you sort of generally deal with, they can be fitted. So yeah, never give up. So like I do with all my, uh, all my components, I've got it positioned on the pads. So basically I've had a little bit of flux, because uh, that really is essential. And what I do, same as always, just sort of tap one leg into position. Again, I don't sort of blob the pad to uh, sort of push the component into the solder. So I generally just sort of solder one pad, sort of, you know, pretty good. And then I, I will go over it in a minute. So what I do, just as always, just run down the joints. What you're looking for, you can actually, well, it's, it's good. You can actually see the outline of the pin. That means you've got a really nice amount on there. And if you can get them like this, that say in the future, you'll be able to do smaller and smaller. But if you generally get quite large lumpy joints, it's hard to sort of get down to the small stuff. So again, I've tacked the, or I've soldered the legs properly around the back. So what I'm going to do is just give it a quick clean. I'll try and turn it round um, so you can see all six joints and what you're looking for. So I'll just give that a quick clean. I'll clean it up properly after and as always I'll put some photos up so you'll sort of get a good idea of what the joints, what you're looking for. So what I'll do, I'll turn it round and try and keep it in focus because it really is small. Just go a little bit more. So you, as you can see, you can see sort of down, sort of down the joints. That's what you're looking for. You can still see the outline of the end of the pin, and that's a nice amount on them. So you don't want too much. If you can sort of get them like this. That will say enable you to do smaller and smaller in the future and uh, basically you'll be able to do anything then so that's basically how i fit my really small ic's so what i do now i move on to the 40 way connector and uh, yeah i hope you enjoy that one all right so we're coming to the final part of the latest video and uh, yeah this is basically a 40 way quite a fine pitch connector um it's pretty tricky this but i'll give you a few tips on the way through one of the main sort of bits of advice I can give you is try and get yourself some 0.25 millimeter solder. I'll say I use a company, I think I've said it before, I use a company in England called BLT Circuits. And yeah, get, if you get some really fine pitch solder, it really aids you when you're doing sort of this stuff like this. So what I do first, as always, is put a, put a fillet of, or bead of flux, literally down all the joints and around the sort of fixing pad at the end. So you can't really do without a flux, so yeah, all you do is put a bit around. Try not to get any anywhere near inside the connector. So obviously you've got all your joints in there. And what I do then, just gently push it into position. It's worth taking, you know, if this takes a few seconds, it's not a problem because this is you know this is the important bit getting it central to start with. So I've just got a couple of pairs of tweezers. I just tweak it into position. So this is a bit you've got to get right. Just take your time. Just get it central. It's worth taking a little bit longer. So basically I've got all the 
pin slightly back from the front so the end pads the end fixing uh, pads are perfectly in position to the component sort of pad and what I do then I don't go near the sort of component pad I stay away and the solder will literally flow itself underneath and around it and try not to be too long on this because basically you've got a metal sort of pad going into a, a plastic body and it quite easily melt it so yeah just try and do this fairly quick just sort of get a bit around there so you've got to do this fairly quick but you'll sort of see the solder run and you get a nice fillet around the end so yeah try not to be too long on them and that's basically it so i've got a nice sort of fillet you can see around the end equally around that end i've got a nice fillet there the pit, all the pins at the front and sort of slightly back from the sort of front of the pads. So that's what you're looking for. So it's all nicely tacked. So what I do now, get sort of on with the uh, the soldering the main 40 pins. Right, so we finally come on to the front 40 pins. So what I do, because I've already fluxed it, just got a little bit on my iron. So basically, I start with the first pin at the end and just go along the line one at a time. So the first one for me is the hard one. Once you get that done, it sort of flows along nicely. So just one at a time. You don't want too long on each pin because yeah, you've got a metal pin going into a plastic body. You don't want that moving inside obviously because the other sort of cable or connector going inside obviously won't plug in properly. So I'll just move that up slightly. So what I do, a little bit more solder on my iron. And just do sort of 10 at a time and then just clean your iron. So I'm not a big fan of drag soldering. So I'll do, I'll do one, sometimes you might catch two but you get a short, easily removed with sort of a bit of braid. But a lot of people have said to me over the years, how do you get your sort of iron to do what it does? Sort of that small. But what I do, when I get a new tip, I tend to sort of spend 10 to 15 minutes just getting a needle file and just filing it down to a nice shape. And that sort of aids me doing what I need to do. So just a small amount on every one, right along the line. As you can see, I'm getting no shorts. Let's push it up slightly. So yeah, just want a little fillet going around the front, sort of a little bit down the sides, and there you go, right along the line, you've got a nice amount. So as you can see, there's no shorts anywhere. You've got a nice amount of solder right down every joint. So you go round the end, you've got a nice fillet round the end, sort of end fixing pad. So the main thing is not to be too long on each pin because obviously you don't want the heat travelling along the pin and melting the plastic. So that's basically how I do my connectors. So anyway what I do, I'll clean this up as per usual and put a few photos up. And uh, yeah, thanks a lot for watching and it's uh, much appreciated. Yeah, if you can like and subscribe that'd be great. And like, like always, I'll put a few more videos up shortly. So yeah, thanks very much for looking in and uh, I'll see you all again soon. Thank you. Thank you.